Hello and welcome. This is my wife, Mary, and I'm Ed, and we are Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. We're excited you're joining us today. We present or expound on a principle or belief related to the SDA Sabbath School Quarterly each week. The Sabbath School for the third quarter is entitled Making Friends for God. This week's lesson is entitled Winsome Witnesses, The Power of Personal Testimony. Today we are going to look at the efficacy of personal testimony as a means of witnessing. The Sabbath School lesson for this Sabbath reads, It is difficult to argue against personal experience. People may debate your theology or your interpretation of a text or even scoff at religion in general. But when an individual can say, I once was hopeless, but now have hope. I was filled with guilt, but now have peace. I was purposeless, but now have purpose. Even skeptics are impacted by the power of the gospel. So our question today is, should personal experience be relied upon, either for our own purposes or for the benefit of convincing others of our course? Is personal experience a good way to determine truth? There was a time when I would have said absolutely yes, but there have been some things that have caused me to reconsider and even change my perspective. Ellen White says that people can be swayed by personal experiences in negative ways. Most people believe things from personal experience that is in alignment with their own inclinations rather than careful experiment. As we will see, Ellen White considered these sorts of experiences to be false experiences, and they can negatively affect our own selves and others whom we share them with. In a testimony entitled, Experience Not Reliable, Ellen White said, Eve was beguiled by the serpent to believe that God would not do as he said he would, Ye shall not surely die, said the serpent. Eve ate and imagined that she felt the sensations of a new and more exalted life. She bore the fruit to her husband, and that which had an overpowering influence upon him was her experience. The serpent had said that she should not die, and she felt no ill effects from the fruit, nothing which could be interpreted to mean death. But, just as the serpent had said, a pleasurable sensation which she imagined was as the angels felt. Her experience stood arrayed against the positive command of Jehovah, and Adam permitted himself to be seduced by the experience of his wife. Thus it is with the religious world generally. God's expressed commands are transgressed, and because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So here we can see that Eve had profound personal experience in eating the apple. She had a pleasurable sensation, which she imagined was the same thing the angels felt. Of course, we know that this experience was a false one. False not in the sense that Eve was not feeling anything, but false in the sense that it was out of harmony with God's explicit will and was not a reliable representation of what was really happening to her. Ellen White continues, In the face of the most positive commands of God, men and women will follow their own inclinations and then dare to pray over the matter to prevail upon God to consent to allow them to go contrary to his expressed will. The Lord is not pleased with such prayers. Satan comes to the side of such persons as he did to Eve in Eden and impresses them, and they have an exercise of mind. And this they relate as a most wonderful experience which the Lord has given them. A true experience will be in perfect harmony with natural and divine law. False experience will array itself against science and the principles of Jehovah. The religious world is covered with a pall of moral darkness. Superstition and bigotry control the minds of men and women and blind their judgments so that they do not discern their duty to their fellow men and their duty to yield unquestioned obedience to the will of God. She goes on to talk about many who have a wonderful personal experience as Eve did, but are deceived. Again, their experience is what Ellen White calls a false experience because it is out of harmony with the will of God and not in alignment with physical laws of science and nature. They spread this false experience to others who also become deceived, like in the case of Adam who was deceived by Eve's experience, and thus the religious world is covered with a pall of moral darkness. We should not be swayed by others' testimonies that are not based on the physical and moral laws. For example, I've heard positive testimonies not only from those who have converted to the SDA movement, but also from those who have left the SDA movement, that they now feel peace and hope and purpose. I've also heard testimonies from Mormons who have felt a burning in the bosom when they've accepted Mormonism as the truth. 
The Mormon prophet Joseph Smith wrote this in his book, Doctrines and Covenants. He said, But behold, I say unto you that you must study it out in your mind. Then you must ask me if it be right. And if it is right, I will cause that your bosom shall burn within you. Therefore, you shall feel that it is right. But if it be not right, you shall have no such feelings, but you shall have a stupor of thought that shall cause you to forget the thing which is wrong. Therefore, you cannot write that which is sacred, save it be given you from me. Robert M. Bowman from the Institute for Religious Research said this about the Mormon's belief concerning personal experience. He said, according to Mormons, this passage and other passages in both the LDS scriptures and the Bible reveal the God-ordained way in which sincere seekers of truth are to know with certainty that something is true. The experience of an internal feeling that Mormons often describe as a burning convinces them that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God, that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God, and that the LDS Church is the true Church of God today. This spiritual witness, which Mormons assert comes from the Holy Ghost, is of special importance to their faith in the Book of Mormon. Of course, as SDAs, we would naturally say that this burning experience is a false experience and not to be relied upon. But do we accept these types of experiences if reported by someone else in a different context, say an SDA context? Do we use these types of experiences as proofs for the SDA movement when witnessing? How many times have we personally felt something was right, later to find out we were very wrong about that feeling or experience? We may have even believed the erroneous thought or experience was from the Lord. We can know something is from the Lord if it is in alignment with moral and physical laws of nature. False experience arrays itself against science and the principles of God. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, and the testimony we quoted from earlier, Experience Not Reliable, Ellen tried to point out to a sickly woman that her experience was not what she thought it was. The woman had a health routine that was doing more harm than good, but the woman felt like the routine was the ideal, even though it was opposed to the counsel of her medical doctors who understood her condition from cause to effect, who were educated and understood the principles involved in her health and were giving medical advice based on scientific experiment. In the testimony to this woman, Ellen White said, You have a special routine to go through, and you will not be turned aside from it. You have your ideas, which you carry out, when frequently they are not in harmony with physical law, but simply with your judgment. Your experience was shown to me as not reliable, because opposed to natural law. It is in conflict with the unchangeable principles of nature. Superstition, my dear sister, arising from a diseased imagination, arrays you in conflict with science and principle, which shall be yielded. Your strong prejudices and very set ideas in regard to what course is best to be pursued relative to yourself have long held you from good. I have understood your case for years, but have felt incompetent to present the matter in so clear a manner that you could see and comprehend it, and put to a practical use the light given you. There are many invalids today who will ever remain so because they cannot be convinced that their experience is not reliable. Ellen White goes on to say, as we have already cited, that these false experiences affect not only our health, but all aspects of life, even our religion. Is our experience of hope and peace and health from the power of the gospel, from the power of science, and from the power of natural and physical law, or from a course which pleases our own fancy, supposing it to be the leading of God's spirit, but lacking in material evidence? Ellen White, in the same testimony, said, Real experience is a variety of careful experiments made with the mind freed from prejudice and uncontrolled by previously established opinions and habits. The results are marked with careful solicitude and an anxious desire to learn, to improve, and to reform on every habit that is not in harmony with physical and moral laws. Personal experience is not reliable. It may be very persuasive for some, but without evidence gained by careful experiment to back it up, it is worthless. Anyone can claim anything, but unless those claims are in harmony with the unchangeable laws of nature and the moral principles of God, they will have a negative and possibly deadly effect on both our physical and spiritual lives and the lives of others. To read Ellen's entire testimony on experience not reliable, please click on the link below in the description. 
So in closing, when we are witnessing for the truth as it is in Jesus, our job is not to show that our personal experience tells us that it is true, for that gives people no more reason to believe us than they have to believe Mormons or Pentecostals or Catholics or anyone else. Our job is to show that the truth as it is in Jesus is in harmony with science, morality, and nature. Thank you for staying with us through the entire video. We invite you to visit our website, www.bdsda.com, to learn more about who we are and, just as important, who we are not. Please join us each week as we will continue to offer new and interesting insights for your Sabbath School studies. God bless. Many blessings.